hello. My name's Sarah Jennings and I'm a natural resource economist with the Tasmanian School of Business and Economics at the University of Tasmania. Historically, fisheries management has been the domain of biologists and other physical scientists, yet increasingly there's recognition of the role of econ economics and other social scientists in fisheries management. Economics is a study of how people make decisions when those decisions really bite. That is, decisions that involve the use of scarce resources. So that choosing to use those resources in one way means we have to give up some valuable alternative. It's also about how people's, people's choices and economic decisions are affected by incentives or changes in costs and benefits. It's also looking at how institutions and rules and social norms affect the behaviour of individuals and how we can design institutions that coordinate individual behaviour, which can often be self-interested, in a way that uses those resources in the best way from society's point of view. So from a fisheries management perspective, we don't manage fish, we don't manage other parts or components of the ecosystem, we manage people and their behaviour their behavior and their interaction with natural systems. So if we don't understand how people behave when put in an economic context, when they're faced with economic decisions about how to use resources, we're going to continue to be surprised at the way people behave and the outcome of fisheries and marine management policies. Understanding that behaviour is key to achieving sustainable and profitable and innovative fisheries and marine industries. I've been lucky enough over the last five or six years to lead a major project aimed at building economic capability in fisheries economics. The project is funded by an organisation called the Fisheries Research Development Corporation. The FRDC, as it's known, represents a co-funded collaboration between two stakeholder groups, the Australian Government and the Australian Fishing Industry. The role of the FRDC is to plan and invest in fisheries research development and extension in the Australian fishing industry. About six years ago, the FRDC took what I think was a very far-sighted decision to invest in building capability in fisheries economics in Australia. The FRDC took, took this decision for two reasons. The first was that they recognised the importance of economics in fisheries management and secondly they also recognised that there were very few people trained in Australia or worldwide actually in fisheries economics. The three pillars of the project are firstly to develop short courses for managers and in industry. Secondly to develop and support a network to support, to support professional fisheries economists via what we've called the Fishy Con Network. The final pillar, and the one that's the most exciting, I think, is to train graduate students in research. To date, we've had about eight students studying PhDs, masters, and one honours students who's already graduated or are in the process of graduating. We've got four in train and we've got three new starters with three projects just having been approved by the FRDC. It's been particularly exciting to see the spectrum or the range of projects that the FRDC have been willing to support. They range from projects that are highly empirical and applied research to theoretical research. We've also had projects that are quite orthodox in their approach to those that use alternative methodologies or heterodox economics. We've also got students who've relied on collecting real world data, but we've also had students who've worked in laboratory situations to observe behaviour in an experimental setting. We've had qualitative projects, we've had those using quantitative methods. Students have also focused on a wide range of interesting and challenging real-world issues. These include how can we improve the productivity and efficiency of Australian fisheries, how are and can industries including aquaculture adapt to climate change, how can we actually operationalise ecosystem-based management by including in our analysis the three pillars of ec ecological, economic and social objectives.